Good morning from Jonesboro, Arkansas, Sunday, September 22nd, 2024, 8.40 a.m. You can't trust CBS News. You can't trust NBC. You can't trust Fox. You can't trust NBC. You can't trust the Huffington and Puffington Post. You can't trust the New York Times. You can't trust ABC News. You can't trust any of them. You know, it's amazing how many BS stories we see about electric cars. Sometimes it's not just Fox. Look at this from CBS News. And they definitely are not right-leaning people. I'll tell you what. Um, now, you know, we already learned from the media that there were no potholes anywhere on our highways until the evil electric car came about. No potholes. No bridges collapsed. Now, I'm being goofy, of course, but... We learned that electric cars are responsible for potholes. We learned that electric cars are responsible for collapsing bridges. We learned that electric cars are responsible for almost all the world's problems. And it's just so stupid. Now, guardrails. Guardrails cannot contain an electric car because they weigh so much. Oh yeah, electric cars are also responsible for, um, of course, bringing down the power grid. Electric cars are responsible for enslaved children. Electric cars are responsible for destroying the earth. They're not actually good for the earth. They're bad for the earth. All these things. But anyway, yeah, guardrails are the next. And listen to this bull. Turning now to something you may not know, the new crash tests of electric vehicles, which point to an unexpected danger. Guardrails on America's roads are typically tested against vehicles weighing up to 5,000 pounds. But many electric vehicles weigh more than that, up to 30% more, in fact. And that means most guardrails may not hold up in a collision. Chris Van Cleve shows us the consequences could be deadly. Early on a Sunday morning. You know, the consequences of the evil electric car. Uh, and of course it shows all these cars. Look at this rear view. Let me back up. Now. Now, new testing is raising questions if the safety infrastructure lining U.S. roads is strong enough to handle impacts from electric vehicles, which tend to be heavier than their gas-powered counterparts. Tests showing EVs tearing through the guardrail, or here, essentially lifting a similar barrier and passing below it. Uni okay, now I want, I want to show you this, and we're going to look at some whites. It's around the 220 mark, I think, and I'll post a link to this so you can watch it is, watch this bull in its entirety if you want to. Let's just start right here. Pay attention to what car you're about to see. Now this Nissan, I don't know what it is. I'm not a car guy. It's nearly half of all traffic deaths. Guardrails and similar roadway barriers are designed to reduce the number and severity of these crashes. This is how a guardrail is supposed to work, containing a vehicle and redirecting it back towards the road. But watch what happens when an electric sedan hits a standard guardrail. During this new testing from the Texas Transportation Institute, the guardrail fails as the sedan rips through. Look at that. What car is that? A Model 3. Look at this one more time, then we'll look at the white. Ooh. The electric sedan hits a standard guardrail. During this new testing from the Texas Transportation Institute, the guardrail fails as the sedan rips through. The Insurance Institute. Okay, here's my comment, and I'm sure somebody's going to comment. I know facts are hurting your feelings. That's what somebody's going to reply to. CBS, CBS shows a Model 3 ripping through the guardrail, guardrail at the 229 mark. I hate to break the news to them, but it only weighs between 3,500 and 4,000 pounds. This is extremely bad so-called reporting. Why not show a Cadillac Escalade run up against a guardrail or a Ford Raptor? Oh, no, 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 no. Only evil EVs are the problem. Let's look at this. Model 3. Uh, where'd it go? Right here. 3,582 pounds to 4,065. Why didn't the guardrail hold up? That's less than 5,000 pounds. Let's look at the Nissan Altima, which might have been what was what was in that crash. I don't know. Uh, look at this. 2999 to 3492. Okay, the Model 3 weighs a little bit more, but still under 5,000 pounds. It's 500 pounds more. It's about... Uh, 12-15% more. Now the Rivian, my gosh, the Rivian is a heavy vehicle. 7,148 pounds. If the story had been focused only on the Rivian truck, then it would have been more legitimate, but even then, 
any reason. I've never been to journalism school, but I would think if I was going around that story, it would have came to mind, okay, let's find a similarly a similar vehicle as far as weight goes, and let's run both of them through the guard well and see what happens. Let's make sure one's electric and one's gas. That would have been a legitimate story. But no, they couldn't do that. 7,100 pounds is a heavy vehicle. No wonder it causes potholes <laughs> and collapses bridges. Let's look at the GMC Sierra. Uh, where did it go? 5,586 pounds. Yeah, so you see the Rivian, which is smaller than the Sierra, still weighs more than that by about 30%. Like I was 1,500, uh, yeah, close to 30%. Well, that's just, that's a fact. The Escalade. Okay, the Escalade don't weigh as much as I thought. And I'd already looked it up and then forgot. 5,800 pounds, but still, that's more than 5,000 pounds. Why aren't we concerned? Why are we not concerned about the Escalade? It's more than 5,000 pounds. Our infrastructure cannot withstand it. But it's kind of strange that the Model 3 causes potholes when the Escalade does not. Ain't that weird how that works? Physics is weird when it comes to electric cars, I guess. Well, there's the Escalade. Okay, let's look at this. The Model Y, 4,200 pounds. The number one selling EV in the world, 4,200 pounds. So no guardrail problems, none at all. The Hummer, now geez, the Hummer, yeah. It crashed right through the guardrail of somebody's house and and anything else that behind it. It's like a ballistic bullet. <laughs> 9,000 pounds, geez, geez, that's heavy. Yeah, so if you want to complain about the weight of a... Uh, Hummer and how it's causing problems, go ahead, run the story. But just make sure you stick to the facts. And the Raptor, up to 6,000 pounds. Okay, gotta build new guardrails or quit selling these Raptors, one or the other. Oh man, those those Raptors are a mess, crashing through guardrails and causing people to die. Oh, oh, no, no, it's got a gas engine, it's fine. Okay, if you wanna watch this BS story, I'll put a link in the, um, comment section and I'm sure that I know people I know people that hate electric cars and will love this story and say well facts hurt your feelings I know that but get over it or they'll say physics don't lie depending you know no matter what you want and they'll completely ignore all these stats I showed up here they'll all be ignored so if you want to talk about how the uh, Hummer runs through guardrails, not EVs. Go ahead and run that story if you want to. But this is a complete bull. And I know people, I know someone that's, that he watches CNN every day, NBC News every night, swears up and down. They're both fair, balanced, completely honest, no problems, no, no problems at all. Well, okay, he can believe that. That's, you know, uh, that's up to him. And I'm sure there's others that do too. I don't, I don't believe any of them. And then anytime I point out to him anything about CNN where they lied, what about Fox News? I said, when have you heard me defend Fox News? I can't stand them either. I don't trust them either. That's what he always says. What about Fox News? Like I'm a like I'm gonna watch Fox News or something and believe what they say. No, I'm also not gonna watch MSNBC News and believe what they say or NBC or CBS or ABC or and none of them. Definitely not. Definitely not PBS. Ugh. All right. All right. You have a good day. Thanks for watching.